Um, so hi, I'm Richard Dobson, Practice Manager of Data Systems uh, in the Innovation Department. Um, and I'm going to be speaking about uh, information, but kind of more broadly data. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? So within the aspects of integration um, work, uh, information was described as availability, accessibility and security of any new or existing information that's required for the solution and its management and operation. So we, uh, um, information and data are, are going to be critically important to getting smart local energy systems right. Um, and particularly pulling out the, the term smart here. Um, whilst it's not necessarily about definitely using artificial intelligence or machine learning or IoT devices, um, it is about making sure that we integrate things intelligently. And to be able to do that really effectively, we need to make sure that we have access to the right data and information. That means we make the right decisions in many different um, timeframes. Uh, can you just move forward, please? Thanks. So there's three main challenges uh, within the, uh, the data space. So we've got firstly data gaps. Um, the energy sector is a, a long standing sector. We've been around for a, a very long time uh, and much of the information that uh, is available is in paper format or is in is in paper formats or uh, is just not that complete. Um, and that will cause issues for um, smart local energy systems because that's going to create um, challenges getting access to the information and the insight that you need to do your, your work. Um, in addition, we find even when data does exist, uh, data access is a real issue. Um, so the energy sector clearly has many different silos and many different um, organisations that are involved in different parts of it. So from, from within electricity, from generation all the way through to demand and use of energy, um, there are a huge amount of participants all collecting different data sets and, um, and using, um, they're all collecting different data sets for their own purposes and they don't necessarily have an incentive to share with everyone else. So actually being able to enable that data access is quite, quite a challenge. Um, the final uh, challenge that we've got here is around skills and that's about um, acknowledging that we have a, a really great engineering base in the energy sector. We have lots of very great um, customer focused people, but we don't necessarily have a huge amount of data talent uh, as it stands. That is changing, that is evolving, uh, but there is a real gap in the collection, processing, the engineering and also the exploitation of data across the sector. Um, and that will obviously be something that impacts um, smart, local and, uh, smart local energy systems. Um, I'm getting a, a note that my um, audio is a bit uh, unreliable, so I'm going to turn off my camera and see if that helps. Um, so we'll carry on. Um, Anna, could you press the um, next button, please? So whilst we've laid these out as challenges um, for uh, data and information in the uh, energy sector, they also present opportunities for smart local energy system uh, providers. So data gaps provides opportunities for innovators to offer new valuable data sources to incumbents. So as well as uh, providing data that or, or collecting data that is useful for your purposes, there may be additional revenue streams. There may be additional people that you're able to share that data with to really get the greatest value out of it. In terms of data access, um, there's particularly within the, the Prospering from the Energy Revolution projects, there's opportunities for innovators to get privileged access and also demonstrate um, what can be achieved with greater access to data. Um, and that's obviously a, a fact of, um, it's a fact that we have consortium projects that are bringing together multiple parties from across the sector and that might give greater access to data. And finally, um, being able to bring in new skills and new talent to drive real change in the sector and, and fill in the skills gaps that, are, that exist. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So as part of this, um, uh, the, the data um, challenges in the energy sector, 
uh, the Energy Systems Catalog has been working on a number of things over the years. Uh, the, the, one of the major things is the Energy Data Task Force. I'm not going to walk through all of this because time is running away, um, but I will focus on two of the, the main challenges and the main uh, recommendations we made. So we within the Energy Data Task Force, we identified two gaps or two uh, challenges. One was data gaps, naturally, and one was that data wasn't being exploited and we weren't extracting the value of data as effectively as we can. So in terms of uh, how we're addressing these, um, we made two recommendations, one around um, digitalization of the energy system, really trying to push this forward to make this a real core part of business plans and strategies um, for incumbent um, organizations across the energy sector. And the, on the other side, we presented a principle of presumed open. So trying to really focus on um, questioning why we can't share data rather than trying to always incrementally justify why we can share a little bit more. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, so as part of um, how we're helping to um, move things forwards uh, within the energy sector, there are a number of things that have happened uh, beyond the task force, of which you can find much more details on the Energy Systems Catapult website. Um, we've broken it down into a few different themes here. Enablers, tools and data. So in the enablers section, we've got some things that we're doing at a, an industry level that really will help to make data much more accessible and much more open and valuable to you. So um, the first one is energy data best practice, um, guidance that we've been writing with Ofgem Bays and Innovate UK. Um, and we're now, um, Ofgem have now indicated that this will become part of Rio 2. Um, this is something that um, Innovate UK, um, who were obviously one of the large funders of, um, of the Prospering from the Energy Revolution program, uh, are really interested in and are really um, trying to push as a as a valuable tool for all the projects um, that are looking at smart local energy systems. Um, in addition to that, we're working with industry both through um, Western power distribution, so electricity distribution in the southwest and, and Midlands, uh, and the ENA, so the Energy Networks Association that represents all of the um, energy networks in the UK, um, to really try and push this concept of presumed open. Um, we're running a NIA project with WPD, but we're also helping to facilitate the the um, open data triage group and providing some some help and expertise into that area. Um, and we expect that both of those projects will result in more data being made available more widely. Um, and the final one in the enablers um, section is the common data architecture project or the modernizing energy data access, which is another part of the prospering from the energy revolution program. Um, and really what this is trying to do is create the right technical architecture and governance processes um, and business processes around it um, as well to really make data flow effectively between different areas uh, of the energy system. Uh, this is a live project. It's just finished. Um, it's just finished its discovery phase and, and two will be moving forwards into the alpha in the coming weeks. Um, in the tools section, uh, these are things that we've been working on directly for the, the ERIS program and, and therefore the, the prospering from the energy revolution projects. Um, so first one is a data management uh, canvas toolkit. Um, so this is something that one of my colleagues has been developing with the help of some external consultants to provide um, the projects with uh, a kit that will address their needs and help them to um, come up with a, a really great um, data management plan within their projects, but also really start to think about the use cases of data and how value can be extracted. Um, alongside that, we've got the data and algorithm algorithm bias paper. Um, this is really, really important within the energy sector, particularly as we start to embrace more smart technologies and um, anything from the smart home or the IoT um, spectrum, where we're starting to gather more and more data and we're starting to act on it um, with a, a lot of confidence in some ways. But there are many places where we need to consider actually is the data giving us a true representation of life and are we able to um, really make good decisions based on this or do we need to account for some kind of bias in that data or even in the algorithms that we're developing as well. Um, so that's a really interesting paper that's 
um, I believe will be published around that. Um, and then the final one is about hard data. Um, so as part of the Energy Systems Catapult, we have the Living Lab program that we've been running for the last three winters. Um, we've already published two winters worth of that data on our open data platform. So that's available for any project to access for free. Uh, we will be looking to get the, the most recent year's worth of data up there as well, when the data has all been collated and processed and, and made ready. Are smart local energy systems viable without open data access across the sector? Um, hopefully you can hear me all right this time. Um, yes, yes they are, um, but it will be really hard. Um, so there is a, a certain amount of data that is uh, almost like a prerequisite for understanding uh, your local area, understanding the uh, networks or other technologies you might want to feed into. Um, and it's um, if you have to go and create bilateral agreements to be able to share each of those data sets, um, that's going to, be, going to be time consuming. If data isn't open and isn't um, or isn't broadly open, um, then it's going to make integration of those data sets more challenging because they're probably going to be in somewhat different formats and you're going to have to do a lot of the effort to bring it all together. So um, I, I think there are there's a core set of, of data that we would hope will definitely be open uh, and um, then obviously that will have to be supplemented by shared data as well.